would join me in the opening prayer found printed in your bulletin. Oh God, our Father, you have brought us again to this glad Christmas Eve when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our lesson comes from the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But measure, Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, no. 
Sounds like church to me. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the first Christmas that uh, Gary and I were married, my mother made us a ceramic nativity set. It was white, all white, and glossy white, so that there was not what you would uh, relate to the nativity set like Fontanini or anything like that. It was just a beautiful, simple, white, glossy nativity set. And it's had a special place in our home ever since. In most Christmases, it's where it is now, next to the Advent wreath on the coffee table. Several years ago, however, at the end of a district Christmas drop-in, I went to clean up and I found that one of the angel's wings had been broken. It had just been toppled over and it had broken just one clean piece off the end. And so I took my rudimentary skills with a glue gun, which are worse than a first grader's, I promise, and I tried to glue it back. Well, it stuck, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all. What had been beautiful and shiny now has this broken winged angel sitting in its midst. But I put it out every year. I put it out every year. That imperfect nativity set. I guess maybe it's because I've lived long enough to know that Christmas isn't really perfect all the time. Some of us have had some very uh, unusual Christmases. We had that Christmas where we bought our five-year-old child a bicycle and it rained all day on Christmas. I bet you have too, something like that anyway. We had that one year when we invited all of Gary's family to come for the week of Christmas and Gary woke up sick on Christmas Day. And I don't mean a little sick, I mean sick sick. Go back to bed and stay in the bed sick. Or maybe you're like us and we had this span of four or five years where every Christmas Eve lunch ended with us calling the pediatrician and saying, we're coming over. And he said, oh, I was waiting for you to call. It got to be the thing, you know. It was every year. And then there's this Christmas. Oh my goodness. There's this Christmas when nothing is what we would have hoped for it to be. Some of you are sitting here knowing that you will not get to see your extended family because of COVID-19. There are many families who have been surprised by the ravages of COVID and there will be an empty place at their table. There are others who have had losses through the year that aren't related to COVID at all. But this will be the first Christmas. A first Christmas without someone they love. We really, really would like to be in our sanctuary where we can see our beautifully decorated Christmas trees aglow with the light of Christmas. We'd really, really love to be there and see the beautiful alternativity and all the poinsettias and the candlelight. We'd really love to be in our sanctuary and hear our choir sing, to hear our gorgeous organ and to, to hear the voices of those people we have come to love who sing for us and provide the sounds of Christmas in ways that we cannot articulate on our own. We'd love to be in our sanctuary, kneeling at our communion rail while we're singing Christmas carols together. As I thought about all of these imperfections of Christmas and that broken winged angel, I thought about the first Christmas. You know, it wasn't perfect either. Not for Mary and Joseph anyway. Just think about what that night was like for them. 
They had traveled 90 miles, Joseph probably on foot most of the way, Mary on a donkey, and great with child. 90 miles they had traveled to Bethlehem. They were in a strange town. They were in a place where there was no one that would offer them shelter. They sought shelter at the local inn. And they were offered a stable. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn child whose father had probably built a beautiful cradle for him and laid him in a manger on a bed of straw. It wasn't perfect. But the most perfect gift came into the world under those most imperfect circumstances. Jesus, the Son of God, came into our human darkness where oppression was palpable, when humanity was fragile, when no one was expecting Him, God came to us. On that imperfect night, angels appeared to shepherds while they were watching their flocks and announced good and great news. A heavenly chorus sang throughout the whole heavenly skies and, and these shepherds heard the message of God's salvation. Those same shepherds searched and found a baby lying in a manger just as the angels had told them. And they knew. They knew that on that imperfect night, God's perfect gift had come into the world. We gather today to remember that God still comes to us. Even in the imperfection of this Christmas, even in the imperfection of our world, even where we are still battling so ferociously against this virus, into this weary world, God comes to us. God comes into our anxious hearts, into our spirits that yearn for the familiar, into our hearts that grieve for so many of the people and the things and the experiences that we have lost. God comes into this imperfection, into this world and brings us the perfect gift. Holy peace, hopeful joy, and an encompassing love that will never fail us and will never leave us. God comes to us, even on this Christmas, to be with us, to bring us joy. Welcome, Jesus. Welcome. Come into our hearts today. Amen and amen.
You may be seated. If you would, please join us now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, as Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman, on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. If you would, please take the elements that you have prepared either at home or have secured from our table. If you need elements, please just raise your hand and one of our ushers will bring them to you. Sam, if you would turn and go to the back if you could when you are finished there. Sam, to the left, there you go. Anybody else need elements? I think Lynn does. Who? I think Lynn does. If you would please take those elements in your hand now. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, these gifts that we have brought from our homes, these gifts that have been prepared for us, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us share in the feast together. And now if you would join me in the prayer of response. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the mystery of the incarnation and for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. With the joy and hope of your life among us, grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the, the power, power and, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Christ into the world, into your heart, into your life, as you serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. Amen and amen.
Amen. Just in time. Yeah. Let, let us help you get that in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>